Hi everyone, so Blender 3.3 is now available and it's an LTS version meaning long term support so it's basically going to be supported for like the next few years. This version of Blender is not as exciting as other versions in the way that it doesn't have so many like you know huge new features. What it does have is a new hair system which I think there are quite a few people excited for and it also has some quite important improvements to uh, geometry nodes in the way of like new UV mapping features as well as some extra goodies. So we're going to take a look through the web page, we do this every time there's a major version because they're always nice enough to provide us with a lovely displayed web page that we can take a look through and just we'll share some opinions along the way and of course I always love hearing your opinions about these updates so if you have any opinions about what we're about to take a look at or if there are any extra features you want to see added to Blender then of course feel free to comment down below and engage in discussion. So without further ado let's take a look at Blender 3.3. So built to last that's of course because it's an LTS version the Blender Foundation and the online developers community are proud to present the first long-term support release of the 3.x series. It feels great that they finally moved to like a major increment model. We were on Blender 2 point something for far too long. Anyway, here we go. The first milestone of the new hair grooming system has landed in Blender 3.3 LTS, so this is going to be an ongoing project. That's why they're calling it the first milestone. If you did watch our previous video about Blender's new hair system, it's quite interesting. It kind of combines destructive grooming tools, like, you know, the regular kind of tools you'll see in the 3D view where you can move the hair around, grow and shrink it in, you know, quite obvious ways, with geometry nodes so some extra procedural tools to do things like kind of adding procedural noise or kind of variations in clumping and stuff basically it adds an almost kind of programmatical element to hair manipulation which i thought was quite interesting so there are quite a few people interested in this feature so sculpt it the new sculpt mode for curves gives you unprecedented control for grooming hair the list of tools includes add delete density comb snake hook pinch puff smooth and slide here you can see a video of that working in action so if you click watch demo here, it's going to take you from this lovely video by Andy Gorauchik showing how the hair grooming works. This is something I've recommended in our uh, older hair grooming video as well. It's a very good demonstration of how the new system works. So I recommend giving that a watch if you uh, have the time. And also quite nice of them, they've recommended some community tutorials here about geometry nodes curve systems. So for some extra watching, you have some nice stuff available there. So kind of along with these hair improvements, we have sculpting on top of curves deformed with geometry nodes, snapping to the nearest or deformed mesh surface. It supports both e and cycles, the curve sculpt mode supports selecting control points or curves, spreadsheet editor filter by selected curves or points, supports symmetry in the x, y or z axes, select random select endpoints and grow slash shrink selection operators. So basically kind of there's a lot of logic available to you in this and like they said it's the first milestone so more development is going to be going into this but speaking earlier about the integration with geometry nodes it brings us on to some of the new geo nodes features starting with UV unwrapping. Now I've heard from a lot of geo nodes artists that this is something that's absolutely essential for a bunch of geometry nodes effects so they're very happy to see this coming back although i don't know too much about the full potential of uv unwrapping in geometry nodes yet because i need to do my own experimentation and i'm looking forward to learning more about that but just so you know the new uv unwrap and pack uv islands nodes open the possibility of creating and adjusting uv maps procedurally using geometry nodes so if we click see manual here it will take us to the documentation side for blender and then we'll be able to access the pack uv islands node where we can see how that works with the inputs and outputs listed and the uv unwrap node as well nice of them again to provide us with a link to some community tutorials about geometry nodes with a uv unwrapping they don't usually do this at least not from what i can remember from previous update pages so i think that's quite nice of them coming on down we have the shortest path node now i've seen a lot of people using this for doing some really cool branching effects for things like lightning ivy trees and labyrinth type stuff and they kind of allude to that here so path to success Three new geometry nodes have landed for pathfinding across mesh edges. Create impossible mazes, lightning, growing vegetation, and so much more. So you can see a kind of demonstration here of a labyrinth, and it's trying to find the shortest path through this maze. And of course, like in regular fashion for Blender feature demonstrations, we can actually download the demo file. So if we click that here, it will allow us to download it. And oh, this was made by Simon Thomas. Very nice, an excellent node wizard, part of the Blender team now. Again, let's take a look at some community tutorials, powerful new addition to geometry nodes by hey pictures kaizen tutorials new geometry nodes game changer see lots of people are getting excited about this very very cool lots of stuff to play with so let's take a look at the nodes the shortest edge paths it finds the best path along edges from every vertex to a set of end vertices the edge paths to curves node generates a separate curve for every edge path from a set of start vertices so i guess that's how you can get basically all these branching curves and the edge paths to selection node generates an edge selection that includes every edge that is part 
part of an edge path. So basically it gives us all of this lovely data, this geometric data and curve data for generating paths like this. But that's not all. There are some extra nodes coming to geometry nodes. We have the volume cube primitive. We've seen some fantastic demonstrations of this made by different members of the community. I recommend checking out this fractal one by Bad Normals. It allows sampling a field in a dense bounding box to create an arbitrary volume grid. We have the points primitive node. So this creates any number of point cloud points with position and radius defined by fields. We have the mesh to volume node. This one's pretty self-explanatory, basically turns a mesh into a volume. But the description here is the same functionality as the existing mesh modifier, which you could use in the modifier stack, now also available as a node. Then we have instance scale and instance rotation, these two new nodes provide access to instance transformations, interpolate domain, allows evaluating a field on a different domain inside of another field, avoiding the need for a capture attribute node. This is some kind of like heavy terminology, so if you're not used to geometry nodes, just go along with it for now. And intersecting edges. The mesh boolean node now has an output field that gives just the intersecting edges. Okay, that's pretty handy. Basically, if you're trying to bring like two objects together and boolean them, so connect them together or difference them or whatever, in geometry nodes, you can actually get the kind of boundary edges of where that intersection is happening and even more so the uv sphere is now 3.6 times faster for high resolutions separate xyz and separate color are now over 20 percent faster who doesn't love performance improvements speed up capture attributes if input is unused and three to ten times performance improvements in curves nodes that's fantastic because a lot of these curve effects have like hundreds and hundreds of curves going everywhere for things like you know cobwebs weird mutated organic stringy masses and all different stuff like that okay so for the 2.5 dr artists among you we have some improvements for grease pencil this will be specifically interesting to you if you're into line art so light and shadow contour the line art modifier is now able to calculate accurate cast shadow and light slash shadow separation line given a light source reference object so in this case here you can see the light source reference up here basically being a sun lamp is casting shadows on these objects and from here it can generate some line art for where those shadows are if we click read more it will take us to the documentation page basically explaining more about how it works with some extra images and some nice visual demonstrations. I think it's quite nice they actually invested the time into making some nice images for this. I think it's much better for helping people understand. So intersection priority. Specify different intersection priority levels for different objects. Then intersection lines will be automatically selected with the object who has the higher intersection priority. Basically here it kind of looks like the blue has the higher priority here. So that's like the one coming in front. And great silhouette. Draw silhouette around selected collection or around individual objects in that collection. Line art is also able to identify intersecting and overlapping silhouette geometries. Again, quite heavy terminology here, but I think the demonstrations are pretty self-explanatory. Animation, grease pencil everywhere. The dope sheet and timeline editors now show grease pencil keyframes alongside other objects and properties. Nice, you can basically access all of your animation data in one place. Visibility of all object types can be adjusted with filters. The grease pencil sub mode is still available for a more focused experience. Performance, fast line art. Loading times for line art objects have been greatly reduced, while calculation of the modifier is now multi-threaded, leading to much improved performance. So they've got a little comparison here on the Mr. Elephant demo scene, showing that the Blender 3.3 LTS is way, way faster at about a quarter of the time. And there's much more. Ping Pope mode for time offset modifier, new sculpt auto masking options, quickly name layers in the move to new layer operator, press U in sculpt mode to select materials, new noise modifier option, only keyframes, and grease pencil keyframes visible in the dope sheet and timeline. There are even more changes if we click on the see all grease pencil changes and it will take us back to the documentation page where they explain more about the line art and other new features. Okay so now we get to talk about rendering. So for cycles, Intel inside. Support for rendering on the latest Intel GPUs has been added using one API. This requires an Intel Arc GPU. The implementation is primarily focused on this architecture and future Intel GPUs. So if we read more about that, we can basically see what types of GPUs and driver versions we need to actually get that to work and some finer detail changes if you are interested in uh, understanding the intricacies of how this works. So it's interesting to see some love being given to Intel. I know they're trying to step up their game in the uh, GPU rendering department, but it's not just Intel. We have some extra love for AMD. So Cycles AMD Vega. AMD GPU rendering for Vega generation graphics cards has been enabled on Windows and Linux. Both discrete GPUs and APUs are supported. This 
includes GPUs such as Radeon 7, Radeon RX Vega series, and Radeon Pro WX9100. So we have a few more changes here. There are optimizations for Apple Silicon, so that'll be nice if you're using a Mac system. Reduce memory usage in open VDB volumes. Use bones as camera depth of field target. Oh, that's pretty cool actually. If you want to like track your depth of field around someone's finger or more likely their face or something like that, that'll be pretty easy now. Faster optics denoiser with multiple GPUs. So for those of you running 50, 30, 90 TIs, I'm sure the denoising will be uh, very useful for you now. I'm kidding. Did someone say bottleneck? And new filmic sRGB color space. Okay, so now we have some slightly more boring but also important stuff. Pipeline, library overrides. Blender 3.3 LTS takes a major leap in usability around library overrides, the backbone of a Blender production. Outliner, it's in the details. The Outliner's library overrides mode now displays all overridden properties in the hierarchy using their labels and icons where applicable. See and edit all overrides at a glance. So we can see that here we get more information about the overrides for each of the properties. Again, this isn't really the kind of stuff which I pay too much attention to when using Blender, but I'm sure there are quite a few people out there which are obsessed with all of this. So uh, this is for you. Quick toggle. Easily toggle between an editable and non-editable override with shift click. Quicker access. There's a new library override context menu in the outliner right at your fingertips. And even more support for overriding camera background images, improved performance of view layer and library overrides display, recursive purge of author items. Wait, actually, that would be cool. I know I want that. Hopefully that means I don't have to keep calling the purge for unused data in the file like multiple times to get rid of all those different layers. Anyway, better purge of isolated dependency islands. Okay, so I know that's all very important stuff, but let's move on to something that I think will be more interesting for kind of general artists and people interested in VFX. Image plane marker. Create or update an image from the pixels behind the plane marker. This allows you to create an unwarped texture from a billboard from footage to allow external editing and reprojecting it back to the footage. So that sounded a bit confusing, but you can read more about it here. And let's take a quick look at the demonstration video on the Blender Developers YouTube channel because this is actually like a really cool feature. So first of all, they have some footage here playing and the first thing they're going to do is track the footage. So they're placing their markers to track it, create plane track. So they're basically marking the boundary of their plane and what they want to do is they want to remove that graffiti so now under the tracking they go to the plane track new image from plane marker so it's basically made an image from that planar selection they can adjust the opacity of that now up here in the image editor they can save this image and they're going to open it in Krita. now they are painting out the graffiti and they're going to replace it with something new like Foo Fighters and then they're saving that image they can refresh it here and then now it will be replaced in the tracked footage so it's a really cool quick way of basically painting stuff over your kind of visual effects footage. And also, of course, you can do some extra compositing here as well. So you have that data accessible to you. I think that's a very cool feature. And of course, we're coming to the end now, but there is much more. We've got extra stuff for animation and rigging, VFX and video, core features, video sequencer, modeling, input, output, sculpting, painting, Python API. I need to take a look at that. UV unwrapping, of course, we took a look at the new geometry node stuff, but there are some extra features as well. User interface improvements and more. And of course, there's a new splash screen and you can go and grab the file for that as well. It comes from, okay, you know what I'm like with names. So we're gonna give it a try. Piotr Krinsky or something along those lines. Anyway, the file is available for you to download for free. Again, I love that. I love like you being able to have your hands on these very visual demonstrations. I think it's the fastest way to learn and to experiment with new features. So yes, that is Blender 3.3. I think it's quite an interesting update. It may not be the flashiest update we've ever had, but there are some very important improvements in there. And like we said, it's like the first milestone for this new hair system as well, which I think is important. So that's the update. If you made it to the end of this video, then feel free to put a coffee emoji in the comments so I can see if you actually made it this far. And if you like, you can put some of your own opinions about this update alongside the emoji so I can have something to read while I have my morning coffee. If you're on Windows and you don't know how to type emojis, press the Windows key and the period key and you will get like this keyboard thing where you can search for emojis. It's quite handy. And if you enjoyed this video, check out some of the other content on our channel. We even have a ton of free and paid resources on my website, curtishold.online slash store. And you can also sign up to my Patreon where you can get your name put permanently on this evolving piece of artwork. And in doing so, you will also be contributing to these videos, the free resources, the paid resources as well, and basically everything that gets made here. So thank you for watching everyone. Have a fantastic day. Happy blending and I will see you next time.